started. Yep, you're up. Good morning, everyone. I am Kapil De Maharaj. Today I'm going to present my research proposal presentation, which is based on the peripheral doors outside the applicator and electron beams of a variant linear accelerator. And my supervisor are Dr. Pageman and Talat Mahamo. In my today's talk, uh, I'm going to talk about the background of electron therapy, which includes clinical applications, key characteristics, key differences in electron and photon linear applicator, changes in percentage depth doors with respect to electron beam energy, applicator size, gantry angles, and I'm going to discuss about more my aims, significance, and benefits of my project, project plan, experimental setup, e-publication, and in the end, cost. Electron beam therapy. Electron therapy is an external beam radiotherapy where electrons are directed to a tumor site for medical treatment of cancer. The most clinical useful energy range for electron is 6 to 20 MeV. And in terms of the clinical application, it is mostly used for the treatment of superficial tumors, which are less than five centimeter deep, deep such as cancer of the skin region, for example, mycosis fungoids, disease of limbs, such as melanoma and lymphoma, chest wall irradiation for breast cancer, the treatment of skin and lip cancer, administrating boost dose to nose. Many of these sites can be treated with the superficial X-rays, bracket therapy, or tangential photon beam. But why we choose some of the uh, uh, some of these cancers treatment for electron th therapy because of this some key characteristic which I'm going going to mention now. So in terms of the key characteristics, the uh, electron beam shows sharp drop off beyond the tumor, which minimizes the dose to the deeper tissues. Dose uniformity in the target volume. So as you can see in picture of the left left hand side, in the green and blue shows the the curve in the green and blue shows the percentage depth the dose of the photons, which uh, and decreases with the tab gradually. However, if you see on the purple curve, which is the percentage depth loss of electron, which drops off very sharply. And another characteristic of the electron beam is the most full and the most useful treatment dip, which we use is the 90% depth dose. And it shows us bone sparing effect. So in comparison of the uh, photon beam, it gives the less dose to the bone. So there are two ways electron beam radiation therapy, radiation therapy can be given. One is a spot treatment and another is total skin electron beam therapy. In a spot pre treatment, we only treat single or multiple stop spots. And in total skin electron beam therapy, we, in, um, we treat entire skin of the uh, entire surface of the skin. In terms of electron interaction, electron can interact with the medium by column force interaction, there are four different ways. One is an elastic collision with the atomic electron in which the atoms of the medium can ionize and excite it. An elastic collision with atomic nuclei which produce the Bremsstrahlung photons. Elastic collision with atomic nuclei which usually nuclear scattering uh, which causes the changes in the direction of the electron. An elastic collision with the atomic electron which produces electron-electron scattering. In terms of the electron scattering, when a beam of electron passes through a medium, the electron suffers multiple scattering due to interaction between the incident electron and the nuclei of the medium. And that scattering varies as directly with the atomic number of the medium, square of the atomic number of the medium, and inversely as the kinetic energy of the square of the kinetic energy of the beam. So because of these two points, uh, we usually use a high atomic number material for constructing the scattering foils. So in terms of the differences between the linear mode and photon and uh, electron beam, so in electron beam, we always, you know, that we retracted the direct uh, target. And second main difference is that instead of using the uh, beam flattening filter, we use an electron beam uh, scattering foil to further scatter the electron beam. And in the end, we use the applicator to further shape the 
the uh, field size of the electron beam. So these are the three key, key uh, differences which we observe in terms of the mode of X-ray mode in electron mode in LNAC. In terms of the electron applicator, electron beam applicator, or which are also called as the cones, are usually used to collimate the beam and are attached to the treatment unit hat such that the electron field is defined at distances as small as five centimeters from the patient. The main aim of electron applicator to leak uh, to minimize the leakage of a scatter. The material used for all variant applicator consists of 8.4% of aluminum, 1% copper, and 0.02% of manganese zinc alloy, and the rest being zinc. So as you can see the picture figure five, the applicator is attached to the Linux. And for more customized field shape, we use a cutout. Uh, which may be constructed and placed on the applicator as close to the patient as possible. And uh, these are uh, cutout is also called the sero band or sero say, which consists of the 50% of bismuth, 26.7% of lead, 13.3% of tin, and 10% of cadmium. The physical density at 20 degrees centigrade is 9.5, 9.4 gram per centimeter cube, and its melting point is 70 degree. So as you can see, the sero band, which is attached to the applicator, which is customized with the treatment field or treatment size. So in the peripheral dose, the main sources of peripheral dose are the combination of two elements, photons and electrons. In terms of the photons, the BREM stalling photons are produced in collision of high energy electron beam, such as 18 MeV with the applicator. And the probability of production of these BREM stalling photons is proportional to the square root square of the atomic number of material. And even the contamination of these photons increases with the decreasing field size. In terms of the electron, electron contribute to the peripheral dose by three situations. One is a scatter out, which is usually occur for the high energy beam penetrate to the applicator through collimator building, which is also uh, um, applicable for the high energy beam, directly escape into the air from a scattering foil without colliding with any part of the applicator, which can be possible for the low energy. Furthermore, the amount of scatter radiation is dependent on the applicator design, field size, patient distance from the applicator, and on the formation of electron beam in the treatment hat. So on the picture on the left hand side, we can show the how the energy spectrum of the electron get widened as it travel from the gantry head and as well as in the patient. So what happens when the electron uh, uh, leaves from the waveguide, it is usually in the diameter of one to two millimeter. But once it moves to the gantry head, it is tied with the uh, foils and other component of the uh, gantry, which due to the interaction uh, causes the electron beam to increase their energy spectrum. And even in the patient itself, when it is tried, its energy spectrum get more widened. So percentage depth dose with respect to increasing beam energy. So increasing electron energy has the following impact on a percentage depth dose. Number one is increases the skin dose. So as the energy increases, the electron um, skin surface doses also get increases. Increased depth the dose of maximum dose, increased range of straggling, as you can see in this figure. Decreased sharpness for low, low electron energy, you can see the sharp drop of electron beam. However, for the higher energy beam, this sharpness is become disappear. Increasing BREM stalling X-ray ATL, so because of the penetration, more penetration, more photons will be appear, which cause the more X, um, BREM stalling X-ray trail with increasing uh, electron energy. High dose isodose line contracts slightly. Low dose isodose line expand literally due to the range strictly, as you can see in this picture. Percentage depth dose for small electron fields. For decreasing field size, when the field of the field, when the side of the field decreases below the practical range value for given electron energy, 
So we can observe from the uh, left hand side figure uh, that depth dose decreases as the uh, field size decreases. Surface dose become uh, increased. Increasing range is strangling. Decreases sharpness as you can see of the dose follow with the decreasing field size. Not for field sizes larger than the practical range of incident electron lateral charge particle equilibrium is preserved and there is a little change in the depth dose with the field size. Percentage depth dose for oblique incidence. So in terms of the oblique ATE or gantry angle, angle of oblique ATE alpha is defined as the angle between the electron beam central axis and the normal of the phantom or patient surface. So as you can see, this angle is known as alpha and when alpha is equal to zero, which is correspond to the normal beam incidence. At large angles, alpha, the percentage depth of characteristics of electron beam deviates significantly from those from the normal beam incidence, such as increase the surface dose, as you can see from this figure. Uh, DOP, DMAX increases and shift toward the surface, decrease therapeutic pen penetration, increase range of penetration. This is because uh, of the contribution of high scattered angle electron, which do not pass through as much tissue. So obligatory effect becomes significant for angle of incidence alpha exceeding 45 degrees, uh, as we can see from this figure. So in terms of the aims of my project, uh, I will obtain the um, dose profile using electron beam energy of 4, 6, 9, 12, and 18 MeV and using the different applicator size such as 4 by 4, 6 by 6, 8 by 8, 10 by 10, 15 by 15, and 20, 20 by 20 centimeters square. Gantry angle at 0 degree, 5 degree, 10 degree, and 15 degree, and at a depth of 0, 0 0.5, 1, and uh, 1, and D max. So after obtaining the do dose profile, I will uh, produce the data which could be look, look like this. And then I will compare this data against my uh, treatment planning system Eclipse. In terms of significance and benefits, uh, similar projects have not been undertaken by UW Medical Physics at Sir Charles Garson Hospital. And about 60% of the secondary cancers which are related to out of the field doses have been recorded at five centimeters from the primary treatment. Even though we know that, that uh, the dose outside the treatment uh, are very smaller, but there is a no threshold dose for the occurrence of secondary A cancer in terms, if we think in terms of the deterministic effect, then I, I believe that quantifying peripheral dose enable potential damage to critical organs, which can help to provide further information to shield in any direction if we are giving some uh, doses outside the treatment field, which can help ensure safe and accurate delivery to patient. And it can also assist in clinical process in terms of protecting healthy tissue. So the more the in sum up, I can say that my overall the aim of my project is, is to, to just increase the therapeutic in, index, which can help us in better understanding, greater reassurance, and less effect to healthy tissue, which can in the end uh, help to the patient with better treatment. In terms of my project plan, I will first make an experimental um, Good experimental plan because since uh, my project contain a lot of uh, measurements, so if I believe that if I make a good experimental plan, then it will lead me to calculate uh, and will lead me to measure the um, to do the measurements with more accurate and um, more precise. And then I will obtain those profile experimentally and as well as with the treatment planning system. Then I compare this data and individually I obtain, do obtain doses which I will do experimentally. I will analyze them as well. And then I summarize the compare data and analyze data. And in the end, uh, I will do uh, write a report and try to publish it. And in terms of the experimental setup, I use gantry, gantry head uh, with, with different applicator size. And under the ad, I will put uh, solid water phantom and on that I will add 
output uh, a fill and uh, the fill the uh, my water flow in term and film will be at the uh, distance of SSG 100 centimeter and at different applicator size and different uh, energy of the electron beam I will calculate the peripheral doses those profiles and uh, I come up with a similar kind of table or data so before doing this experiment I will do calibrate Linux will be calibrated to check whether it delivers one centigrade a per monitor unit under reference condition the reference condition would be the field size 10 by 10 centimeter square SSD is equal to 100 centimeter and at D max and film will also be calibrated at the standard radiation before measurement the for that the film of 2 by 2 centimeter square will be taken and will be placed at the uh, field size 10 by 10 centimeter square at SSD of 100 centimeter and those value from 0 to 150 centigrade will be used. So then after that film will be scanned by digital scanner and then those uh, images will be uh, through those images we can determine the pixel value by using the MATLAB. So in order to find out the optical density and I will in the end come up with similar kind of the calibration curve. So in terms of my literature review, I have made a table in which I have um, put a first author to their publication date, what kind of machine they have used, what kind of uh, applicator and cutout sizes they have used, gantry angles, what depth they have used, electron beam energy, whether they compare the data with a, a treatment planning system or not, what kind of detector they have used, or how they have normalized their data and what they got in their result and if they provide in any kind of recommendation or not. So had first start at all use electron machine using this kind of applicator sizes at gantry angle of 0, 10 and 20 at the depth of 0, 0 0.5 and 1 dmax and they he used the electron beam of 6, 10 and 18 MeV but he didn't compare the data Compa he didn't compare the data with the uh, treatment planning system and the, he used the film of uh, EBT3 film and profiles were normalized to the distance of two centimeter from the edge of each field. The main result was that the peak dose showed inverse relation with the depth and field size and even the peak dose moved toward the central axis with the increasing gantry angle. And further, he recommend that dose out of full could be reduced using shielding for each applicator and beam energy. Picaturin et al. He used on Encore Linux machine. He uses this kind of applicators uh, uh, size, but he still didn't use the uh, cutout. And at gantry angle of the 0, 10, 20, a depth of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1 and dmax, at the electron beam energy of 6, 9, 15 MAV. Uh, Equitorin compared his data with the a treatment planning system and he used the detector of parallel plate ionization chamber and normalized the data. The main result from this was the electron beam of 15 mega electron wall didn't peak at the depth of 0 0.2 and 1 centimeter at gantry angle of 10 and 20 degrees and same result has been observed with the, as the uh, hex per sath et al observed like the peak dose shows inverse relationship with the depth and the field sizes. Furthermore, he mentioned that deep treatment planning system is not sufficient to measure the peripheral doors outside the applicator since the, this dose can only be determined by direct measurement and even he suggests, suggested that at Monte Carlo will be the good uh, option to further uh, analyzing the uh, uh, peripheral doors outside the applicator. Chow et al. 2016, he used variant machine and he uses this kind of applicator and even he used some different kind of cutout sizes at a gantry angle of 0, 5, 10 and 15 at the depth of 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1 and D max at electron energy of 4, 6, 9, 12 and 16 MeV. He didn't compare his data with the uh, treatment planning system and he used the film of Kodak uh, TL and the doses were normalized at 8 centimeter outside the CAX. The main result was the 
uh, peak dose was a spot observed in the 4 MeV beam outside the applicator. The peak dose position was also shifted 7 mm toward the CAX when the angle of obliquity was increased from the 0 to 15 degree. And in terms of the re recommendation, and he mentioned that peripheral doses can be removed by wrapping the lower part of the applicator with a lead foil or placing extra shielding on the patient where needed. So this is all the uh, main uh, publication that I have mentioned here. So in terms of the cost, uh, I'm going to use the metal for calculating the pixel value from the scan uh, film image that will amount to around $200, which will be provided by UWL. And even the two boxes of EBT3 will be used, which amounting to $2,500, which also be provided by UWA. But all other required equipment will be provided by the Department of Radiation Oncology at Sir Charles Garden Hospital. And for that, I thankful for the Sir Charles Garden Hospital providing me all kind of uh, equipment. Thank you. Any question? Okay. Thanks very much, Kofil. Excellent. Any questions from Kofil? Yes, Mashid, you have a question? Um, yes, thanks, Kofil, for um, the nice presentation. I just uh, want you to go back to your um, plan for measurements. Because, uh, a bit further back, where you have all the energies and field sizes and all that. Oh, okay. This way. Um. Yes. So, where are you going to make these measurements? Uh, As a Charles Gardner. You. Yep. Okay. We don't have all of those energies. So we only have six, nine, and twelve MeV. Um, okay. So that's that's good to have in mind. Then yeah, are you yeah. are you planning to do um, measurements with cutout or without cutout? Uh, with cutout as well. Okay, because uh, um, in reality, when you treat a patient, you never just have them without a cutout. Okay. Um. So um. You you. We'll probably find out that if there is no cutout, you will get some more dose outside the field. Yep. But when there is a cutout and there is shielding um, for each patient, that would, would change. Yep. So um, just have that in mind. OK. Yes. And. Um, Thanks. Yeah, just just that for me for now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, Martin? Um, yeah, thanks, Kaplan. It was a great presentation, a great overview of clinical electron beams. Thank you. Um, when when an electron near the edge of the field enters a patient, uh, it might it might travel sideways away from the field into the periphery. Um, how how far might that electron go? away from the field, if it's, if it's a 12 MeV electron, how far might it travel away from the electron beam? So it, basically it depends on the applicator size and uh, and different uh, Linux machines. So most probably in my, uh, whatever I learned from the literature, it mentioned that around um, uh, one or maximum Two to five centimeter, it can travel electron outside the uh, you know uh, the applicator or treatment size from mm -hmm. two to five centimeter. So again, okay. it depends upon the electron energy and the uh, patient setup and the distance between the applicator and the patient. It, these all things contribute, but minimally two to five centimeters, the electron can easily travel outside the uh, applicator field size. Sure. Yeah, and so you talked about. There's two sources of the periphery dose. So one is those electrons in the tissue that scatter out to mm -hmm. the periphery, and there's also the leakage through the applicator that you talked about. Um, so the shielding is only going to stop the leakage, isn't it? No, it's, uh, there are it's still possibility that that electron can penetrate to the applicator. 
-hmm. and that can cause the you know peripheral doors and even the some uh, photon in the edge of the applicator can be produces like for, uh, due to the interaction that can cause also the you know peripheral doors yeah but you can't do anything about the electrons once they enter the patient's tissue you can't you can't shield that component uh, we have some method like we can pro, uh, uh, use the bolus in order to protect, but still, still, um, you know, uh, for the uh, for the treatment like the head and neck, the in terms of the radio sensitive radio biology, the, the cells of the head and neck are very, you know, um, productive. They can produce very continuously. Uh, in that point of view, if you see, then it's is still good to you know quantify the doses to the head and neck tissues to further put in, in terms of the further protection and uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. OK, thank. Thanks, Kapil. Just very quick question, Kapil. Just imagine if uh, out of the dose is high, what you are going to do? What is your action? So if, if the, out you, of field, the out of field dose is yes is more than the expectation. Yes. Um, first, what I is will wrong? Try to, first, I will try to make a cutout or even provide some bolus material on the patient surface in order to protect the patient. And even if it's not possible, try to arrange different setup to make this uh, high dose to minimum as possible as um, as as I can and using the alarm mm -hmm. principle. That's right. Um, even probably you can think about the um, applicator is not working very well. So maybe there is some deflect in the applicator as well. So yes. That's good. excellent. It's great. Any other questions from Kapil? All oh, good? Brilliant. Thanks. So Martin, if you can please um, stop recording then. Thanks very much, Kapil. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, our next. Um...